This video is going to be a complete walkthrough of a DC circuit that has a capacitor, which is this little fella right here, and a resistor in it. Right now, nothing's happening. We've got the switch open, but when we close that switch, some stuff's going to start to happen. Now we've closed the switch. Now, if you remember from the inductor video, when the inductor switch is closed, current starts to race through the circuit and it gets up to a steady state. That is not the case in this case. We have a capacitor here. So what's happening is we are building charge. And I'm going to assume again you know, but this is just a quick little mini lesson. We're going to take the electrons here. We're going to dump them on those plates. We've got the holes here. We're going to take them over, over to that side. We're going to get current flowing for a brief amount of time. And then once this guy charges up, the capacitor charges up to be the same voltage that the battery is, then current stops flowing. So what we're doing here is we are setting up voltage on the plates as opposed to the inductor. So if I did that same little chart that I did in the inductor video, I've got this guy going across like that and that, I will start out at zero volts and I'll work my way up and then I'll reach a steady state voltage. We're not even going to call it steady state voltage. It's just going to be the voltage at the capacitor. Now that's the thing with this one. We have to remember that when we're doing our calculations, we're calculating the voltage at this capacitor. So let's throw some values at this. I've given the capacitor a value of 100 microfarads. I've given this resistor 25 ohms, and I've given us uh, 120 volts source voltage. And what we're going to do is we're going to work out tau. So it's the same thing as an inductor. It takes 5 tau to get up to a full charge capacitor. So we're going to work out what the tau is, the time to the full charge of the capacitor. Then we're going to walk through some voltages. We're going to use a very familiar formula for this voltage at the third tau. We're going to talk about this voltage at the third tau. We're going to talk about what happens to the current of the third tau. And then we're going to talk about the W, the energy stored in the electrostatic field in between the plates. So let's take a quick look at the formulas that we're dealing with with this walkthrough. So here we go. Our tau, with our tau with the inductor, it was L over R. With the capacitor, it is R times C. We have no L, obviously. So we're taking the resistance, we're multiplying it by the capacitance to get the tau, or the time constant. Then we have to remember we take five of those. Five times tau equals the time it takes to fully charge that capacitor. Then we get this guy here, this one minus e to the negative x times v source, and this is important, equals your capacitor voltage, not your resistor voltage. You're gonna wanna use that as your resistor voltage. Don't do it. It's your capacitor voltage. So one minus e to the x, that minus x sign, that is your time constant. So if you're trying to figure it out at the first time constant, it is 1 minus e to the negative 1. Second would be 1 minus e to the negative 2. Third is 1 minus e to the negative 3, and so on and so on. That 1 just stays there as 1. You don't change that at all. Then our voltage at the resistor, we have to obey Kirchhoff's law. So our voltage at the resistor is going to be, once we figure out our voltage at the capacitor, you're going to take that and subtract it from the source. And that gives you your resistor voltage. And then to determine the current, well, it becomes quite easy once we have the voltage of the resistor. We're going to divide it by the resistance because E over I, e, sorry, E over R equals I. It's just Ohm's law. And then the energy stored is just W is equal to 0.5 CV squared, much like it was for the inductor, which was W, w equals 0.5 LI squared. So these are the formulas we'll be dealing with with our walkthrough. Let's take a crack at it. So here we go. Our first item on the list here, tau. So to get the tau, all we have to do is go 100 microfarads. So you're going to put that as 100 to the neg 10 times 10 to the negative 6. And you're going to multiply that by 25. And then you're going to get 2.5 milliseconds, which is perfect. Now, time to full charge. All we have to do is take this number here and multiply that by 5, because it takes 5 time constants to reach full charge. So 5 times 2.5 gets us 12.5 milliseconds. So we got those two down. Now, all we have to do for the voltage of the capacitor, if you want to go back like a minute and look at that formula part of this video, is we go 1 minus e to the negative 3. Let me write that out just so we get that wrapped in our head here. Let me just make my pen a little bit bigger. 1 minus e to the negative 3, and we're going to multiply that by the source, which is 120 volts. We do that, and we get our voltage at the capacitor at the third tau. That works out to be 
114 volts. So we're almost done, guys. This is getting easier and easier as we go. Now we know that we have 114 volts here. We want to figure out what the voltage is here. Well, we know if our source is 120 volts there, and that is 114 volts, that leaves us with 6 volts that it has to be across that guy there. Now let's talk about the current. We can't work out the current when it's across a capacitor. That won't work out for us. But we can work out the current across the resistor because we have a voltage on the resistor, which is 6 volts, and we have a resistance at the resistor, which is 25 volts. Using Ohm's law, we would take 6 divided by 25 to get what our current is, which is 240 milliamps. So at the third tau, our current is 240 milliamps. So it's dropping. And then by the time we get to the fifth tau, remember, we will have no current. In a capacitor circuit, the only time current flows in this circuit is when the plates are charging. Once the plates are fully charged, current stops flowing. Only thing left now is this energy stored in the electrostatic field between the plates. We're just going to go 0.5 times C times V squared, and we get 720 millijoules. And that's it. We've worked out a volt drop across the resistance. We've worked out the volt drop across the capacitor. And we've worked out the current flowing in the circuit. And we've worked out the energy stored in between the plates. There's nothing else to it. Now, the only thing to mention now is when we open this switch, when we saw an inductor, when we opened the switch, the current would drop like it was hot. But in this capacitor, we're not dealing with the current. We're dealing with the voltage. Specifically, we're dealing with the uh, electrons on the plates there. When we open that, there's no place for those electrons to go. So a capacitor could actually theoretically hold its charge until somebody came up and licked that or touched it or some sort of discharge resistor was put across that to get rid of those electrons. We will talk about that in another video. We'll be putting in a discharge resistor. See you on the next one.